Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to tone and color shape the sound of a bass guitar using polyphonic spectral editing. And the purpose for this in this example is I wanted to really fit in the mix. Now I have a very basic mix here. I've got bass guitar, overheads left, right, and kick drum. Not too much. I just wanted to blend in with the organic sound of these, these three mics representing the drums. So the first thing I like to do is I'm going to select focus on my bass guitar. And there it is. Now, spectral shaping comes into play with the sound editor. And to see the sound editor, simply select it like this up here in the top left. And you have to also have select focus here in the tracks view. So keep that in mind. If you don't see it, then activate your track like this. And now you're putting focus on the bass guitar here in the sound editor window. Let's take a listen to these tracks briefly. So as you can see, the energy here is representing the harmonic series, okay? You also have an EQ section, but we're going to work on the spectral shaping using the harmonic overtones. And when I um, play back the audio here from within my editor window, we'll just hear the audio I have in the editor window, which right now is only the bass guitar. Now, I'm going to show you how quickly we can get a more punchy, aggressive, and cut-through sound using just a couple of simple techniques that have been working for me. I'm going to loop my audio from right around bar 9 to bar 20, and I'm going to manipulate the some of these macro sliders here. Here you've got emphasis, dynamics, brilliance, contour, odd even, and comb. Let's take a listen. I'm going to play back all the tracks and manipulate my brilliance and my contour. Now, what brilliance does is it really makes it sound more brilliant sounding. I'll give you an example of that. Okay, and to reset any of these, I can hold my command key and select it back. Now it also increased a lot of that noise floor too, so keep that in mind as well. Now next we've got my contour. What that does is it exaggerates the pre-existing shape of the harmonic overtone structure. See that? It's, it's exaggerating them. Plus we can also invert that and get a lot of flexibility in tone shaping with just these, these couple of parameters. So let's pay them back. I'm gonna massage those two values and you'll see how we can get a more punchy and aggressive tone. So let's A, B that. Here I'm going to use my bypass in my global bypass in the sound editor to toggle that on and off. I just want to hear the bass guitar and let's do that. Here's with the with the processing on. Here's without. Here's with. But how does it sound in the mix thus far? Let's check it out. Here's first without. And here's with. Without. With. It's already sounding a lot more aggressive. Now, you have to really just tweak these to taste. In this process video, I'm just giving you a quick example how you can access some of these macro features here to manipulate the harmonic overtones. It's a lot different than working with an EQ, which is filtering specific frequencies here. Harmonic overtone editing is in the spectral shaping in this, in, in this example, allows you to use Melodyne's polyphonic engine to tone shape the color of a sound. I'm going to also let's see, take a little bit of the sustain away, increase the attack a little bit by 
increasing my dynamics, let's say about 12%. Now what that does is I'll slide that around so you can get an example. Okay, so I'm gonna increase the dynamics of that around 22%. Let's hear that in the mix now. So by making it more transient to the right like I did, I'm just focusing on the attack of the bass guitar and a little bit less on the sustain of the body instrument. Now you can do that either way again to taste if you want. So, so far we use the brilliance the contour, and the dynamics. And just these three parameters alone can really help you start contouring the shape of that bass guitar sound to really fit in the kind of mix that you're looking for without having to reach for an EQ first. And this is all happening latency-free within the plugin window itself or in the standalone version of Melodyne that I'm using here. So let's hear it again bypassed. And here's with the editing on. There. So being able to use the spectral engine here built into Melodyne is a real advantage in your workflow. But again, the best way to experience this is to try it out for yourself. So dive right in, experiment, you can do no wrong, and have fun. Thanks for watching.